Yeah. Okay. Test. test, test, one, two. Here. All right. All right. Tom. That's your water if you need. To learn about asking questions about just stable individual. Okay. And stable as a brand. So okay. really more so questions gearing to the future. Here we're good to go. We're all good? Cool. What's going on, guys? It's Tyler Martin, CD Gear CGTV. Uh, we have a very, very uh, anchor, a pillar into the into the streetwear world right now. Thank you, man. Lead uh, needs very to, to little to no introduction, quite honestly. Uh, Jeff Staple. What's uh, up, man? I thank you for taking the time to speak with us and pick your brain a little bit, man, about the Staple brand, what you're doing. We're hearing a lot about you. Uh, we know all the success that you've had in the past. So I just want to pick your brain a little bit all right. uh, for our viewers as well as myself and those around us, what we can learn from you, uh, maybe be in your position one day or, or you know, fill that void and how we can grow as, as a streetwear industry. Okay. Um, so just the first question, man. What, what is a positive social contagion? What is that? Uh, what does that mean? You, you're going deep on the what first one. First one. We're coming right. at you. Coming at you good, man. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to back up first by saying that like, I've been in this industry for a long time. And I think... One of the things that I've always tried to do is remain consistent. And the staple name has never changed. The staple Absolutely. font has never changed. The pigeon mark as our icon has never changed. And you know, when I came up in the industry, I always respected people like Ralph and you know, like all the old fashion designers and how consistent they were. And even though street culture was much more volatile and fast, right. I still wanted to inject that consistency into this culture too. Okay. Um, and so a positive social contagion you ask about is our tagline. And that tagline I created, I'm gonna date myself, but in <laughs> 1998. Okay, wow. Okay, I created that tagline. And I actually never thought it would stick because it's, it's quite like complicated. It's not like just do it or enjoy right. coke or something right. you know it's like, it makes you wonder yeah, yeah it makes you think and that was the purpose of it i think and i think it complements the pigeon really well because the pigeon is like so direct and strong that like this tagline almost is makes you think a little bit more so what does it mean so if you break down each word positive to me positive means uh moving in a forward state Right. A lot of people think when you say positive, it means like, oh, save the trees or like, <laughs> you know, like uh, don't pollute. Right? right. But like to me, it's like, of course, I want you to do those things. But to me, if you're doing anything that's moving you in a forward manner, bettering yourself in whatever way you think that is, that's positive. Now, that is so relative for so many different people. Right. That could for for like. A Wall Street business dude, that could mean like, I need to get my sales quota up and I need mm -hmm. to sell more, that's positive. For a single mom, like in the hood, that could just be like feeding my family, Absolutely. that's positive. So like, they're both doing positive things on a very different level, you know what I mean? And so, to me, I don't place judgment on what you're doing as long as it is positive. Okay, okay. okay. so it's positive. I like that. Social just means people. That's what social means, right? So it's of the people, so that's pretty simple. And then contagion, is something that is contagious and spreads from one person to another. So if you can create something that is positive, makes people move forward, affects people, and spreads everything that Staple does, whether it's the clothing or a collaboration or a design or sponsoring a musician, everything that we do is, is filtered through that. When we ask ourselves, should we do this project? Mm -hmm. We say, is it a positive social contagion? Does it move people okay. forward? Does it spread? And if it does, we do it, you know? And um, I think that's been a really good, like, barometer of, of whether we do projects or not. And right. we say no to a lot of projects because it doesn't filter through one of those things, you know? Like, it's not positive. It, it doesn't exhibit a positive thing. Sometimes we, do, we don't do a project because it's not social. It's not people. Got it. You know, like some, a pet company just hit me up recently and I was kind of <laughs> interested, but I was like, it's not people, it's animals and I'm not ready to go there yet. Right, right. Yeah, so like maybe later, Okay. you know, and then does it spread? So that's what a positive social contagion nice. is. And that, that sets me up perfectly. So like being that you're saying in 1998 and, and it sounds like the pillars are affecting a, a large group of individuals and not just segmented to just New York or just a particular yeah. area. When you started this, was that your vision where you wanted to cater to the New York area to a specific customer base? Or was it from day one you knew, yeah. I want this to engulf as many people as I possibly can? Yeah, well if, you, if any of you people watching this were back, were alive in the, <laughs> in the 80s and 90s and can remember, there, like when I started Staple, there was no such thing as street culture. It wasn't a thing yet. 
there was hip hop culture, right. there was skate culture, there was punk rock, there was there was like all these subcultures, but they were all very separate. You know, like if you listen to hip hop, you know, you couldn't skateboard. If you played guitar, uh, you if you played electric guitar, you couldn't be into hip hop. You know what I mean? There was like it was very Got bucketed. It. And I think a lot of things happened during that time where like there started to be a, a, a blending of it. And that's really what street culture is. And I couldn't imagine back then that street culture today would be like the biggest one out of all of those things. You know, mm -hmm. like like you look at like the influence of like a Pharrell or a Kanye and like Absolutely. what they have or like a Virgil, what they have on like everyone from, you know, like streetwear, skateboard, t-shirt brand to Louis Vuitton to like Ikea. It's like crazy right. how this culture has just influenced everything now. And I'm honored that I was a part of it. You asked me if I thought it was gonna really go there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have aspirations of like one day we're gonna push this there. Okay. But I did feel like I was an ambassador of the culture, um, right. that I could speak on the culture. I could like, I had the, I had the ability to sit at different tables and talk to different people about, about the culture, whether it was like a kitchen table with a graffiti artist or a boardroom table with like a Fortune 100 company, I could sit and talk about the culture with both of those people. Um, and so I put it on my back, you know? And it's dope, like, you know, when I was at the acceptance speech for like when Virgil was, you know, nominated okay. for like his Nike project and he said like if it wasn't for like you know, the Lower East Side of New York and Reed Space and, and Pigeon Dunks and stuff right, like right, that, right. like we wouldn't be here today. Those are like the architects, you know, so it's really dope for, for someone like who, of his stature now to like recognize the past. And I, I in some ways feel like all the, all the people who have been in this industry for so long, um, I couldn't be happier for a guy like Virgil, but like, it's almost like, I feel like we all pushed him up. Absolutely. And like, the culture did we that. couldn't all do it. It was almost like that movie, The Matrix, where like there's a Neo, like there's only one, right? But it's like there's Morpheus, there's Trinity, there's all these right. people, but like there's only one that we could push up. All the and time, Virgil sure. was the one that we pushed up. For sure. I, can, I totally agree with that. I yeah. mean, I think what he has done has opened my eyes and everyone watching this that has a love for this industry or like you said, that had a love for those subcultures of that era to yeah. now. I wouldn't imagine, anyone would imagine a man that's in you know, skatewear, streetwear, whatever, yeah. to... to transform into being a creative director for such a pillar of high fashion. But you know who, what's more important? It opened your eyes, it opened others' eyes, yes. But more importantly, it opened the eyes of people who at one point put down blockades to us. Those people. Very true. This, I'm gonna call them the suits. Or like, they are the, the gatekeepers to a world that they were like, y'all ain't coming into our world. Like, and we're gonna make sure you don't come in. Absolutely right. But we kept, I wouldn't say like we, we pushed the door down, but we were like that dude in jail that just like keeps like picking away, like slowly but surely, mm -hmm. one little rock at a time. And then eventually the wall Found just the crumbled down. And then when the wall crumbled down and then you got a guy like Virgil, now it's like those suits can't ignore us anymore, which is, that's like the dopest thing, you know? So now the ability for, forget, you know, me or even like, you know, someone younger, but like imagine you're 13 years old right now right. and you're watching this and you want to create something and Virgil's already the creative director of like Louis Vuitton and Obama's already president of the United right. States. Like right. this kid is like, anything can <laughs> fucking happen now. So literally. I don't know if I can curse on this. You're but. not limited <laughs> to being a president or, you know, saying that, not no, saying that there's you no can't be, but you. It's crazy. It literally, you can become anything. Anything. For sure. Anything. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that, I'm sure when we were, when I was in middle school hearing about Pyrex, I would have never, to me, you know, Pyrex yeah. is something tangible. I could reach, I almost touch it. Yes. But Louis Vuitton, I'm not even thinking about no. it. So to think that that same individual is now here. I'm not even comfortable in the Louis Vuitton <laughs> store. Like the retail <laughs> store, I'm not even comfortable yet. It doesn't, it doesn't feel welcome. It doesn't. You don't yeah. feel like this is, like you said, the suit is not for me right. to kind of be in here. Yeah. Do you think... Uh, because you know we we are aware that you have you know your hype business podcast the business yeah. hype excuse me yeah do you think that that was the way to chip at that wall was to okay let me pull away from the hype and the, and the colors and the palettes and, and yeah. just seeing what's going on as far as culture is concerned let me get down to the analytics and the yeah. mathematics and the, and the benefit of it and maybe yeah. that's my way in is no maybe or, it's not okay. it's not I don't I don't even think about breaking down the wall because when I when I was coming up. The wall was so strong, it was so unpenetrable, that the only way to make a living was to go around the wall or like 
past, like just make right. your own universe, right? I'm glad the wall's down now and they're all looking, and I'm glad that stuff that we did was a part of it, but I think this, the fact that I built like another world over here on the side, and those people were like, what's going on over, what's mm -hmm. he doing on that side? Like, we should invite him over for dinner <laughs> one night and see what he's got going Pretty on in his game. Yeah, kind of yeah, right, exactly. Sure. That's what I did. So like, Business of Hype was, um, was just me saying like, seeing a lot of kids come up and you know, I think social media has a lot to do with this. Like when you see someone succeeding on social media, it's like 1% of the true story. It doesn't show, Absolutely. right? It's like, it's not reality, you know? It's like, it's Absolutely. just fake curated <laughs> photos. And then you see a guy and you're like, oh shit, he's got a Lamborghini and he's popping bottles. That means if I do what he does, I'll oh, get no. a Lamborghini and I'll be able to pop bottles. No. No, exactly. <laughs> no. So, so the business of hype is kind of like talking to these people and being like, what did it really take? Like, how much debt did you really get yourself mm -hmm. into? How many people screwed you over? And like those stories so that when a kid listens for 60 minutes, he just thinks twice before jumping into that pool, you know, and like understands the sharks that are involved when he's in there. Um, and it's just not all fun and games like it is on the gram. I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. And that, again, these are all working beautifully because my next question to you <laughs> was going to be about the direction of, you know, you mentioned social and just how quickly things are, you know, available and whatnot. Yeah. But do you feel like you're hearing, of course, the e-commerce business, you're hearing a lot less as far as like brick and mortar stores are concerned. You have your resale that's just the it right now. Yeah. Is that where it's going? Are we going to release to sell out? Yeah, and then if you're not one of those guys, you sit on your hands and then you surf in the web trying to find that reseller. Is that where we're headed, or do you think we're we'll get back to that brick and mortar, that aesthetic, that feel? Because I feel like that's what we've lost. Yeah, I feel like I stores are losing that. I come in and I feel like I want. I don't have to purchase, but I feel good in here. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't get that personally as a shopper. I don't get that anymore. I feel yeah. like I'm here to purchase. If I'm not, I should have just stayed at home and ordered it. And yeah. have to get there. But I'm an instant gratification guy. Right. So I need it immediately. Yeah. Do you think that's where we're? Are we going to to e-commerce, internet shipping only, or are we going to go back to that brick and mortar? Or what I, would you like to see? I think that e-commerce. You, you mentioned a lot of things. I think e-commerce um, is here to stay. That's not going away. I think the reselling thing, I think the bubble's gonna burst on reselling. And I think the way sneaker companies are dropping shoes with like mm -hmm. hype backing them and the Thursday drop and then the sellout and then the resell, I think that's all gonna crumble soon. I think it's gotta get back to the culture versus right. the transaction. Okay. Right now it's all about the transaction, right? You launch sneakers app, you try to get them, right. got them, found, like it's sad that now it's all about got them or missed them. Literally. That's what it's all about now, right? And then how much you could flip them for. But, you know, I was having a conversation recently with um, Ronnie from Kith okay. about what the definition of shopping is today. And shopping to somebody 10 years ago meant you walk into a store, you see an entire wall of shoes. There's no such thing as tier zero, tier one, quick strike, elite 11, consortium. There's none of that shit. Right. It's everything that the company had was on the wall. And then you look on that wall and you're like, all right, I'm gonna, let me get that one for that's half off from the right. bottom shelf, and I'm gonna wear that with my denim and my shit, and I'm gonna make it fly. And you go to school, yep. and people are like, "Yo, where'd you get that?" I was, don't worry about it. Don't worry it's about it. You know? right. Yeah, it's just me. Now, an influencer, a rapper, or a blog has told you that this is cool, and now shopping is a kid walks into a store and he goes, "Do you have this?" No, and he walks out. That's shopping now. You remember the days when like you'd have five or six shoes out with the boxes and you'd be like, yes. people don't even try shoes yes. on anymore. Yes. They don't try shoes on. Yes. It's like, I'm, you got this? I'm a 10. All right, bet. Peace. Like, out the door, what yeah. happened to like putting stuff on and like seeing if it's comfortable? No. So like if that keeps happening, which it is right now, mm -hmm. but if that keeps happening for years and decades, what happens to our ability as people to make a choice, to have a, an opinion like, we okay. become like, there's this movie, um, what was it called? Wally? -E? Where like, it was a cartoon. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, one, of the, one of the Apple um, Pixar movies. Okay. Right? And it's like this world in the future where like everyone's in these chairs that they move around and they get food delivered to them. And it's just like, it's like Netflix, <laughs> seamless, you know, spot. Everything is just served up in this chair. Yeah. And they're all like morbidly obese and they're just like these that's what we're going to be if we don't make decisions for ourselves the individuality will be, yeah yeah and it's gotten to the point where like we we brought up virgil before right mm -hmm. so now that we hyped him up i'm going to throw him under the bus <laughs> a little bit right now but now like i have a pair of off-whites right uh -huh. i have a couple of them 
I don't want to wear the off-whites now because if I'm in New York and I wear the off-whites, it's like it makes me look like a sheep now because I'm that dude. It's similar to the dude who wears like the Supreme Five panel, mm -hmm. the LV bag, and the off white. Like, oh, he's that guy. And <laughs> that guy. Yes. He's that guy. Yes. Even though I'm not disrespecting the shoe or the creation or Virgil, but because of Instagram and hype, if you wear that, you're now that guy. I now would rather wear like a pair of shoes that you ain't even know. You've, ne who, yeah, you've never absolutely. heard of. That's what absolutely. curation is. But I feel like. That's no longer cool. Like it's now, we've gotten in an age where like, it's cool that you are a sheep. Mm. It's cool that like, I opened this magazine, I saw this photo and you look exactly like that guy in that magazine. That's cool. But like, when I went to school, it's like, that wasn't cool. That was like, Absolutely. That was just, I was just having that discussion. You know, a lot of, you've seen a lot of your, to your, your assets, your influencers, you like to Migos and the, the two chains of the world yeah. to where not knocking their style and their ability, but to me, they're the off-the-runway shoppers. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. like you said, the lack of individuality. If you have the pocket, I can purchase that no. spring, yeah. summer, 18 Gucci and walk <laughs> out the door. You know what right. I mean? But if you don't, you piece it your own way and figure yeah. it out. Like you said, I feel like that's we're missing that. Yes. I, I, 100%. I yeah. totally agree with and you. And I think the brands now, like the, the bigger brands, they're going to recognize that and they're going to say one of these days, similar to how like with the environment, we're now saying like if we don't reverse our ways in the environment, we're gonna like lose this earth. Mm -hmm. The brands are gonna say, if we don't reverse our ways in, the w in which we release product, we're gonna lose our customers because they can't make decisions anymore. Absolutely. We need to bring back a brick and mortar store. We need to bring back an environment where people can come in, have a conversation, chop it up with an employee, and actually like learn about a product and make a decision informed for themselves. Like, that's the future to me. Do you think, do you think that's why a lot of your brands now that are releasing are looking for those social media influencers to back them. They're not just yeah. leaning it to, because you know, before the thing was product will sell itself. Yeah. You know, you touch it, feel it, you know what it is, it's out the door. But yep. now it's like, like you said, I need that person in it. I, yeah. It's like the product by itself isn't relevant enough. Nope. I gotta have that An next NBA yeah. draft or that, that hype beast kid from Instagram. Yeah. I gotta have them. All the companies are saying the same thing right now, but they'll learn. It's not gonna work. It's already, I gotta, it's already not working, mm -hmm. but they're still trying to like, figure out a way to make it work. Um, but they're gonna soon learn that like, man, we gotta actually like put care into our product again. All over again. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Could we since we're talking about Virgil, could we see a Jeff Staple, Virgil Avlo uh, mesh at some point? I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice to see. Well I do yeah. want to ask you, so um, Julian and I were just having a conversation about just the world of collabs. Yeah. And just and we knowing that you're a pillar of that. Two questions. One, do you feel like you you started that basically. Mm -hmm. You are the originator from for the most part of the collab world. Mm -hmm. And secondly, which I know this is a, a hype question, but I gotta ask you, why the SB? Uh -huh. You know, you have you have your guys like um, I forgot his name, Lance, who was who did your uh, AJ One collab at that time. Yeah, who was a skater. Yeah, went retro basketball, yep. did his thing there, and then you went Nike SB. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. pieced your thing together. You know why right. why do that? All right. Oh, so the first question is. Um, I don't consider myself, a, I mean, a pillar of collaboration. Like it was something that was happening before in a very niche subculture kind of way. Um, I think my collaboration, what it did was it brought the subject of collaboration to the masses. And like it made everyone see like, holy cow, what's going on here with like lineups and resale? Like because of this pigeon dunk, it's become like everyday news to people. Before that, it was like really subculture. You know? So that's, I think that's what my, my project did. Okay. Um, and then in terms of why SB, uh, back then in sneaker culture, SBs were like, in many, in many shoe experts' opinion, that was the last golden age of sneaker culture is when those SB came out. The Supreme SBs, the Heineken SBs, um, the those. Pigeons, <laughs> you know, like the Londons, the Paris joints, like that was the last great era. Of, of sneaker culture. And so I've always had like an affinity to that era as well. And then to some of the things you mentioned about how skateboarding, skateboarders adapted with basketball mm -hmm. shoes. I like the fact that fashion kids were adapting into skateboard shoes. And so I always wanted to, to sort of align myself with that. Okay. And I, I also like the fact that skateboarding shoes are designed with a, 
like a performance aspect to it. Like it has to obviously have water resistance, right. impact resistance, cushioning, all this the stuff. Comfortability for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I like the fact that there is an actual like function to it. You know. So um, I still I still fuck with the SBs. I'm yeah. wearing them right now. Right. I love the gorgeous. <laughs> Unfortunately, I missed out on my on my little chance there. Is there? Do we have any any glimpse of a uh, uh, some collab in the future, or do you have anything that you're trying to get back into the footwear world? And yeah, and no, we got with some. This is, uh, we're now in, you know, mid-2018. We have a lot of interesting things coming out at the end okay. of the year. Yeah, we got Exciting. some dope footwear stuff coming. Nice. Um, a lot of them. I mean, I think me and footwear are just tied hand in hand, you know. And even when we design the staple collection, we always make sure that it's influenced by sneaker culture. Absolutely. You right. know? Okay. And we've been doing that before the hype. Because ever since I was young, I dressed from the ground up. Like I decided what shoes I was gonna well, wear, then you did and then you, I built the pants, and <laughs> I built the shirt, and I built the hat on top. You Absolutely, know? yeah. <laughs> so that's it. The toe to head. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ex yeah. Instead of head to toe. So I've always been that dude. And so when I design the collection, I design it the same way. I see what's happening in sneaker culture. I see not only what kids have on their feet, but I also see how they're wearing the shoes and how the pants and the shoes are interacting. So there was a point where like, people were wearing baggy ass pants where mm -hmm. like two thirds of your shoe were covered. Then the, then the jogger came and it became like, oh, now the sock is part of the exactly. conversation, you know? Yes. And then people started cuffing their pants, right? And so like now, and then it was like cool to not wear socks and then now people are wearing like socks with sandals. Like, yes. So like I'm just seeing all of this stuff yeah. and I'm just figuring out how does the rest of it, because it does. I mean how your pants fit with your shoes will affect how your top and 100%. jacket, it all links together. And that's how we create the staple line. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Which is why I think probably in the past few years, as sneaker culture has sort of like skyrocketed, like staple has sort of rode along 100%. with it, I think, because we've been designing it that way. Okay, Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's especially now seeing it from a side as a, and on the buying side yeah. that our viewers may not see it from, I see that. Yeah. You know, I'm seeing that decline, that incline and then the decline when the footwear drop. It's, you guys, it's you almost as if it. you're yeah. in that realm. realm. Like you yeah. said, like you are. It's, yeah. You're in apparel, but you're directly affected by the right. footwear. Do you think like the big shows like uh, Complex Con and mm -hmm. things like that, do you think that's where these Socks with the sandal, sock without the sandal, pant, cup. Because you get, it's basically a big melting pot of yeah. all cultures, from all yeah, geographic, yeah. you know, upbringing. Do you feel like that's uh, the positive for the culture right now to see just a big melting pot of, of influence, pretty much? It's a positive for, ah, oh, there's so many negatives of those things, too. We can, we can touch on those things. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a nice way to release stuff, right? But right. It's not the future. That's not the future, I got to say. That's okay. a Band-Aid fix. You know, because um, what happens is a complex con asks all the brands that are exhibiting to release something special, right? And something limited, which is what creates all of that energy in that space. The problem is, is if in the future there's like five or six different complex cons, and I mean by different companies, right. right? Each one of those companies is gonna be like, hey, we want you to create something special for us. And there's not a way that like a brand like Staple can keep making special projects for all of these different festivals. So there's like a very short ceiling for that. It's gonna cap out at like three. And then mm. we can't fit anymore, you know? Um, and I don't go to those things to look at what people wear because um, it's not real. Everyone like, goes to those wanting to be shot by hype beast and like complex to, to be on the so gram. Like the most. Yeah, to get yeah. yeah. I, I take... It is, uh, yeah, it is. It is Instagram. It's living Instagram. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. yeah. I get my inspiration by taking the train every day. Like, I want to see wow. what real people wear. So I take the subway every single day to and from home. I walk the streets. I don't take car services. I don't take limos. I don't, you know, like, I want to see what everyone's wearing. And even when I go to a foreign city, like, I'll sit at an outside cafe and I just watch people and mostly their ankles and feet, right? Because I'm, I'm just very interested in how normal people, normal everyday people, not people thinking they're going to be on the gram, not people who are, like, waiting in line in front of Supreme, but, like, just regular people rock their shit. Because I want to make stuff influenced by them. Because that, to me, is the future, right? Like, yeah. Positive social contagion is so funny that you met, asked that first because that is the recipe. Like if you could get the masses around you and like all the people, that's where the power is. 100%. Not that one guy who has 750,000 followers. Like 
sure, there's influence around him. Uh, right. But there's more power to the people always. I agree. Yeah. Okay, with that, so being that's an influence, so who, to kind of take it outside of the business world for a quick second, since everything basically influences everyone, you know, who, who are you listening to right now, like in the music world? Are right, you influenced right. by new artists, uh, new actors, are there cars that are coming out that are getting your attention? We noticed, you know, you got a little uh, interest in Lamborghinis and the foreign side. You know, what else influences you? You know, Can you do a, a tweet I wrote? Yes, please. please do. <laughs> I said yesterday. I honestly can't figure out if my taste in music is getting more fickle or if music is just getting worse and worse. I really couldn't understand it. Like I, <laughs> That's I, a good I, question. I wasn't being like snide. I was on the way to the airport and I finally got a chance to listen to like Nasir, okay. his new album, uh -huh. Kid Cudi's new album. Like, there was been a lot of hype around all of those Kanye projects, which right. like seven songs each, and I was listening to them and I was like, am I like old or is this not that dope? I'm right there with you. You're right there with I'm right, I'm right there with you. I, I hate to say that. <laughs> no one shoot us down, please. Yeah. And there's great work within the body of yes. work. Yes, there's moments. Yes. But it's not. I'm not, I'm not thinking three months from now, I don't see myself checking back. I said the same, so my, my designer, mm -hmm. he was like, are you crazy? You <laughs> see, it's an instant classic. I was like, I will bet you $100 that come September, you won't be listening to that album anymore. I totally agree. Right? I totally agree. And that people just, it's the, back to the whole hype conversation. Yeah. That's what it is. Hey, he can, that individual can do no wrong. And the fact that he's producing everything, everyone just feels obligated to love it. They feel obligated to say it's a great because he's involved. I actually feel like the listening parties that he's doing are genius, right? Because mm -hmm. it creates like this fervor. And when I'm looking at the, the listening parties on Instagram, I'm like, holy, this album's gonna be fire. Like, I'm so stoked on the album, right? And then I listen to the album and I'm like, like it was such a downer. And I realize now, I think, cause Kanye's so smart, right? And I'm sorry if I said his name, we're supposed to use his name like. <laughs> yeah, right, you know, you can't. Yeah, right? yeah, him, he's so individual. smart. He's so smart that I think he heard the albums and he's like, I need to do some stunt. Like a, like a you know, something to just hype this shit up with these roaming pop-up listening parties mm -hmm. that gets people so hyped and it's true i think it really works but like when you really just remove the hype and listen to the album it's okay and again that's my yeah. opinion you hear that and then you hear you know the carters come out with an album that has no hype no commercial yeah. no anything and then it yeah takes over the streaming world right right just that quickly yeah uh well man well, i appreciate your time i got one last question for myself and anyone watching if you could give some direct feedback just that you've learned from your time here that you feel like if you knew this day one, yeah. you could have avoided some things or you could have stood a little bit straighter. What, what can I, those watching, those in the room, what can we hear from you that we can take forward that we can do not forget? Okay. You can't know everything. You got to just understand and say to yourself that like, I'm not the best at everything. And the, the greatest humans are the ones who look in the mirror and say, I actually suck at these three things, <laughs> right. right? And I need help when it comes to these three parts of my life, whether that's personal, love, or business. If you can look at yourself in the mirror and really understand that like, you know, your weaknesses, because everyone's really concerned about like, what are my strengths, right. right? And they go through life like bragging about their strengths. But like, if you can recognize your weaknesses and really wear them on your sleeve, like, and almost be proud of them, like, yo, I suck at math, I suck at business management, like I'm self-centered when it comes to love, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? If you could just speak those out and get help for those or just have people help you with them and that is to me what completes the full package of being a great human being. I nice. think that's some life advice that I learned. I love it and I think that goes right into like you were saying with the whole positive content, what positive means and yeah. how it affects many people. I think that's perfect, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you talking Thank to you. us, man. CGTV again, Tyler Martin, Jeff Staple, man. That Thank you dope. very much. Hope you guys enjoyed it.